general study aims to create a law of peoples based on liberal ideas of justice. By a law of peoples, roles mean a political conception of right and justice that applies to the norms and principles of international norms and practice. His article also focuses on determining political liberalism's attitude toward non-liberal communities once a law of peoples based on liberal principles has been established. Liberal societies will honor non-liberal societies as long as they follow people's law. Liberal societies will condone a certain kind of non-liberal society which is well-ordered hierarchical societies. How a social contract doctrine and universal in its reach. A liberal conception of justice starts with a theoretically shattered and self-sufficient liberal democratic society and includes only political viewpoints rather than all aspects of life. How can such a conception be extended to non-liberal societies, to future generations, to non-cooperative individuals, to animals and the rest of nature? In short, how can such a conception be universalized? Reasonable answers may be forthcoming to only the first three questions. In any case, a political conception of justice cannot be expected to handle all these questions. The liberal concept of justice as fairness is constructed through a reasonable procedure that involves helping with relevant subjects at various levels. Three preliminary questions. The liberal conception of justice is divided into two parts. One pertains to the domestic realm of liberal societies, while the other refers to the overall realm of people's political societies. The original position informs the principles of justice for both. The citizens are the relevant subjects in the first. In the second, they represent domestic, both liberal, and hierarchical societies. It doesn't this accept the state as traditionally conceived with all its familiar powers of sovereignty? No, because in the first use of the original position, domestic society is seen as closed, since we abstract from relations with other societies. There is no need for armed forces, and the question of the government's right to be prepared militarily does not arise and would be denied if it did. Also, the war powers of governments, whatever they should be, are only those acceptable within a reasonable law of peoples. We must reformulate the powers of sovereignty in light of a reasonable law of peoples and get rid of the right to war and the right to internal autonomy. Why start with liberal societies and not, say, the global society? For one, domestic society was used to illustrate the idea of justice as fairness, and it showed to be a sensible place to start. Another point to consider is that domestic societies organized by governments occur throughout the globe. The law of peoples provides the conceptual tools with reference to which the law of nations or international law can be judged. This is the distinction between the law of peoples and the law of nations. The extension to liberal societies. The liberal conception of justice contains a list of basic rights, liberties, and opportunities. A high priority for these fundamental freedoms and guarantees to ensure effective use of these freedoms. Justice as fairness is typical of these conceptions except that its egalitarian features are stronger. To some degree, the more general liberal ideas lack the three egalitarian features, the fair value of political liberties, fair equality of opportunity, and the difference principle. The extension of the liberal conception to the law of peoples proceeds in two stages ideal and then non-ideal theory. In the first stage, it is assumed that all relevant societies comply strictly with the principles arrived at. These societies may be liberal or hierarchical but they are similar in that they are all well ordered. The examination of liberal societies is followed by the consideration of hierarchical societies. The feature of consequence is that both kinds of societies will comply with the principles of the law of peoples. In the second stage, the case of societies that refuse to comply and societies that are unable to comply due to unfavorable conditions are very briefly considered. The first original position behind the veil of ignorance is an instrument of portrayal that stipulates considerable improvement for the parties involved, the representatives of free and equal citizens in liberal societies, in that they are represented equally, 
comprehended as reasonable and presumed to decide on the fundamentals for the legitimate purposes. In the next level, the participating parties as representatives of liberal societies are to determine the law of peoples. As with the first original position, the representatives are reasonably situated, the representation is symmetrical, rational, law principles are determined with reference to the interests of liberal societies and make appropriate decisions. The veil of ignorance hides information regarding the size of territory or population, the relative strength of the people, the extent of natural resources, the level of economic development, and so on. The principles reached by liberal societies will be well known. They will permit cooperative association but will not result in a world state. A society's government is the representative and effective agent of its assets, the people's territory, and the capacity of the territory to sustain them. Without such agent, the asset will deteriorate. Irresponsible management of the asset does not give them the right to conquest by war or migrate without consent. In addition to the three requirements of the original position, there are two further requirements. First, the liberal society should be stable in the right way. This means that it should be stable because of the merits of its principles and judgments regarding its ideas of justice, rather than because of some fortunate balance of power, it being no people's interest to upset it. The historical record suggests that, at least so far as the principle against war is concerned, this condition of stability would be satisfied in a society of just, democratic peoples. Since 1800, firmly established liberal societies have not gone to war with one another. This being so, we all shall suppose that a society of democratic peoples, all of whose basic institutions are well ordered by liberal conceptions of justice, will be stable in the right way as above specified. The last condition is that the citizens of liberal societies accept the principles and judgments of the law of the society of liberal societies after due reflection. Extension to Hierarchical Societies A well-ordered hierarchical society fills three conditions. First, it is peaceful and gains its legitimate aims through ways of peace. Its comprehensive religious doctrine is not expansionist. It respects the civic order and integrity of other societies. If it seeks greater influence, it does not so in a way that respects the liberties of other societies. Second, it imposes moral duties and obligations upon its members. It not only insists on a common good conception of justice, it takes into account what it thinks are the fundamental interests of its members, but it is also willing to administer its legal order and defend and justify its decisions publicly. A well-ordered hierarchical society constitutes a reasonable consultation hierarchy. Third, it recognizes basic human rights. If it insists on a common good conception of justice, as the second requirement specifies, it must recognize and protect those rights. Otherwise, such an insistence would be unreasonable. Fulfilling these conditions, even hierarchical societies can agree to a law of peoples that recognizes human rights. Their representatives will also, when positioned in the original position, adopt the same principles that liberal societies would. Why? Because they care about the good of their societies, meaning they are rational, and also because they respect the civic order and integrity of other societies, meaning they are reasonably situated. There is no inconsistency in assuming that hierarchical societies are equally situated along with liberal societies. Even though the former might allow basic inequalities among its members because it is not unreasonable for an inegalitarian society to insist on equality in making claims against other societies. Although the first original position incorporates a political conception of the person rooted in a liberal society, the second original position that determines the law of people does not. This enables the more specific liberal conception to be extended to a more general law of peoples that encompasses even non-liberal societies. So why not start from global original position? For one, it is not certain that proceeding in this manner would yield a different set of principles. Also, starting from such a position is troublesome for the use of liberal principles since it means narrowly assuming all persons as rational based on liberal conceptions. 
But how can a liberal conception of justice be applicable to hierarchical societies? Because they fulfill the same conditions as those specified for liberal societies. They will honor a just law of peoples for the same reasons that liberal societies do. In short, they fulfill the conditions of well-orderedness. Human Rights Human rights are not derived from comprehensive moral or philosophical doctrines. They only express a minimum standard of well-ordered societies available to all members. The imposition of moral duties and obligations makes the existence and acceptance of human rights possible. The requirement of human rights is that members of societies should be responsible, cooperating, and obedient to the moral duties and obligations all of which are fulfilled in hierarchical societies. Human rights are therefore not exclusive to the liberal tradition. They are politically neutral. The basic human rights can be protected in a well-ordered hierarchical state. One role of human rights is to circumscribe state sovereignty. They are universal and non-controversial. They are integral to a law of peoples and specify the limits on the domestic institutions of societies. Human rights legitimize regimes prevent forceful, even if justified, intervention by other peoples, and set a moral limit to pluralism among peoples.